Bos Geldenis, welkom. So today, uh, my method is comedy, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, my, as you saw yesterday, the drunk, I'm being the comic. But we have some very good comic teachers coming up as well. Yes, thank you. Um, and I, when I looked at it, I thought, no, let's try and do something with dramaturgy. Because it's kind of really, really important in street arts. And it's also disputed in street arts because a lot of people do not recognize it as having a place in street arts. They say, no, this is over intellectualizing. Well, it's straightforward. Yeah. Um, and, this is, and so in, in England, when I go to the Independent Street Arts Network and I talk about WTG, you can still see the practitioners going, oh, good, no, no, it's not going to happen. No, not dramaturgy. That belongs to theatre. Now, in a way, some people do, some people don't. The dramaturg's role in, on the continent, what we call on the continent, you know, like not in blue, um, is actually far more in tune with dramaturgy. The dramaturg from Brecht and the dramaturg from all the various, uh, you know, in Denmark and Germany, the dramaturg is an important character in making performance. So, in a sense, um, but, but then we have this, what, what I might call an extended dramaturgy, you know, which is outside or the extraordinary way that uh, the performance is made now, which is, you know, which is complicated, which has many political issues, has many, many social issues, has many things. You're into, you're into um, mixing with all sorts of different kind of architecture, you know, planning, um, urban rejuvenation, well-being, community, heritage, tourism. These are all massive inter interfaces with what street arts is presently doing and can, and more importantly, can do in the future. One of the arguments about street arts future is how is it able to diversify through its very porous boundaries into all sorts of new areas with new ways of thinking in order to develop a basis which will be vital for street arts. It will be the basis for future funding. If you're suddenly pulling funding from all sorts of sources than the usual ones. So to understand how you reach over, both in the actual existing forms that you have in the street arts, and how new forms are born, because it's a hybrid subject. It's a hybrid subject. It's, and one of the great things about hybrids is they're full of life. They have lots of energy. Because people are coming in at them and going, wow, why don't we mix this and why don't we do that? You have this wonderful energy in street arts, which is, which is phenomenal. But there's a tradition in France, for example, still, where they're kind of not sure whether we should be doing that, because there's an older generation that holds on to things and doesn't want to move it. But there's also a new generation, and other generations, or extra. Et so there's always this, this debate, and a debate is great. A debate is, is very, very interesting. In England, we have somebody called Jeremy Corbyn, <laughs> he says, no, I'm not going to play the old games. I want there to be a debate. I want there to be a discussion. I don't want to be insulted. I won't, I won't insult you back. I want to talk about it. And I think that's really an interesting kind of new political place to, to, to come from anywhere. So the debate is really important, I think. Um, so um, from that kind of context, I noticed straight away that we've constructed space. We've done the street arts construction of space. We've got a circle. And we're all democratic, and we can all see each other. So we've taken this space and we've made up another picture, which is a democratic picture, which we assume is democratic, but we know in practice it's not. There are various degrees in this circle that have more power and more influence than others. So it's actually not that democratic, it just pretends to be democratic. That's a debate, a discussion. We'd like it to be more democratic as a form where there's equal voice, but people have more influence, more, more knowledge, more, you know, I'm, I'm in a position, I've put myself separate from over there. If I'd put myself up by the screen, I would have increased my power because I would have been reinforced by the space of being the presenter. Therefore, I have authority, I have the computer, I have the information. You sit over here, you're in an inferior position to me. 
So straight away we are talking about the, the we are talking straight away um, about um, the uh, dramaturgy of space by doing this. This is dramaturgy of space in practice. So we use this room today as a, a resource. Um, can I use the corridor as a resource? Can I use people going up and down the corridor as a resource? Yeah. I hope so. Can I use the staircase as a resource? Yeah. Can I use the lift as a resource? Well, I think, but it's super slow. Okay. <laughs> Is there any place I can't use? Here. In the building? Well, I think the floors two, three, and four are a bit off limits because they still begin. So if we went there, it would be transgressive, yeah? Well, we can see what will happen. Okay, I, I, I don't want to go there, but I want to find out where the limits of our space is today. That's an interesting question, Gabe. Yes. I mean, where are we got to the boundary when, as performers, we start transgressing the space, start expanding the space, start claiming it? So I'm not going to ask you. To, I'm not going to do that with you. But I want you to be aware of this space that we're actually in. Is about the dramaturgy of space. This very, you know, this wasn't built to be, I don't think this was built, this room, to be a, a room for performance. No, actually. But it's been adapted, it's been, it's been reconstructed in order to make it useful. But it's, it has its limitations, you know? It has height limitations, it has width limitations, etc. You know? Which is fine, absolutely fine, because we can do something with that reconstruction. And the idea of dramaturgy is about the construction of space about the rationale, uh, uh, the, in terms of outdoor performance, it's very much about the construction of space. So, um, so what do I mean by dramaturgy, first of all? Okay, so I'll give you a definition. Um, the uh, dramaturgy of outdoor space is the rational, sorry, the rationale, the reason, and logic, the rationale and logic of the composition of a performance. And the consequences that have, that this has for the production. Okay, so where do you start with? What are you trying to do? What's the reason for doing your show? What's the purpose? Sorry, you said competition. No, I meant co I mean com com composition. The composition. Sorry. Like, yeah, com composition. You can put things in different orders. Why do you put your show in a particular order? What, what's the beginning, middle and end? What's all the, the bits that go into different places, etc.? If you have a playwright, that's sorted for you. The playwright has one voice. They write it down, they have the order, they, you have the structure, etc. Then you have a director. Whose job is to direct the action through to a satisfactory end? One function, director also adapts or changes or manipulates the script because it's a working document. Um, uh, the director also inspires people. You know, doctor, the director is a dictator, you know, is a charmer, you know, has all these different things in order to make something happen. You have to be very clever as a director. <coughs> so, so what's that why is that different from a dramaturg? Well, especially in street arts now where for example we might make the show with a director there's a collective voice. There are many ways in which we've come to the conclusion in the making of it. There are many debates and discussions in a, what we call in England, a devised performance. Devised is a means, mm -hmm. not a term that's used here. <coughs> devised means um, collectively made by a group. We're very used to doing this in England now. It's a very kind of common way of making theatre. Um, usually overseen, by a director, but at the end of the day, um, there is contributions by all of the company to make it. Yeah? Um, so that in itself has thrown up huge numbers of different art forms and cross art forms. Dance working with digital, yeah, um, uh, acrobatics, circus, meeting, uh, drama. Um, Digital meets um, digital meets immersive. You know, once you start mucking up with the arts forms, you have quite a complexity of histories of how to make work. Dance has its own conventions. Digital is beginning to have its own conventions. Everything has its own conventions. 
A digital, has, so you, a digital mean like video? Yeah, like digital art or digital, <coughs> digital performance or, or, or um, street art, that, for example, works with digital number technology, working off, you know, um, um, and playing games or whatever it might be. Um, so you've got these kind of really, you, not, not only are you mixing art forms, you're mixing conventions. Where, who is the audience? What is the audience? Big question. You know, it's, it's not a given. Um, uh, where is the production? What is a site? Um, 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 what are the expectations? What does the audience carry in their head? It's different from dance than it is from another place. So you've got, you know, we can't help now, we're on the move. Society's rapidly on the move. And so, in a way, the task of composition, <coughs> of construction, is not simple. You know, you can have many really bad collisions, you know. So, how, so, so uh, that's why I, I've kind of, now, at the university, I teach dramaturgy mainly as a contextual subject, which means that there's a lot of discussion, lots of looking at productions online or live or whatever we might do. We, we analyze a lot. We look at it and we see, well, how does it work? Why is it working in that particular way? How is it composed? What are the issues in it? What are the political issues in it? What are the contextual issues? What are the, you know, what are the debates in making work? As a dramaturg would naturally be used to in forming a piece of production. Um, so what's challenging for me today is to try and put that into some kind of practice. We do exercises, like I'll ask students to go out and have a little political protest in the university to explore how you know, protest works. Or we'll, we'll have a, we'll have a, 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 I'll go out and I'll say, go and look at, the, write down the rules of place. How does, how do people operate within space? What, what happens in different places? So there are exercises. Um, but I thought it'd be quite nice to look at this space and this space from in to out, see what happens. Um, so I was, I'm on an exploration, guys. So I'm, I'm not, I haven't got a rigid method. I'm not going to, that's it. That's what I do. But I think this is, a, this is, the spirit of what we're doing. We're exploring how training and education can meet each other or talk to each other or whatever it is. Um, so, um, so I think the dramaturgy is really important in the present for street arts in the future. The most interesting, I think, one of the most uh, important times that you see the dramaturgy is not well thought out is when a show fails in the street. That could be because the actors are bad, it could be because the directing is bad, it could be all sorts of things, but very often it's because the dramaturgy is wrong. I've watched a very good French company called Pistacchi come to the Hat Fair. In France, when I saw them, you met in a very old building. You followed a series of roof tiles that were your lead into the particular performance. On the way, there were wonderful interventions of these fantastic four male dancers. There were projections up on a building that really made sense. There was a churchyard of, 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 tiling, of tiles like stuck in the ground. Yeah? And then you made your way finally to a site where there's an extraordinary performance that was a big pile of, 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 of broken tiles and, and an extraordinary kind of um, circus acrobatics forming dancing with handbags and as hats and just very, very beautiful. And it absolutely made sense. They had thought it through dramaturgically. They knew the journey that you were on. The journey was really much part of it. At Hat Fair, it got put on the side of the road. And it was just like, yes, it was just sections of it, bits of it. The audience booed it. The audience booed it. They thought this is absolute pretentious rubbish. Yeah. A dramaturgical disaster. It wasn't placed well, it wasn't seen through, well, the, the space wasn't worked out, the journey wasn't worked out, the whole meaning of the show went. Yeah? Can you repeat the name? Bistaki. Bistaki. They're called G.G. Bistaki. Very fine group. Um, B I S T A K I. Now they have a really interesting, the reason you asked that question is well, it's interesting. They have an anti. Um, celebratory stances, start status. They refuse to set themselves up as a sort of permanent company that people go and see. They hide themselves a bit. 
So in their dramaturgy, they're very keen to always be on the move and not to be held accountable for their last great show. That's a dramaturgically brave decision when, you know, maybe it's possible in France with a lot of money <laughs> to make shows. But for example, that's an interesting debate to have about the nature of how do you politically place yourself within a sector. Um, so I go back to the main point there that the, 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 the most important reason I think that performances fail is because this is not being thought through on a dramaturgical basis, yeah? It's forcing itself into a space. It's not thinking about it. It's not, it's not gearing it up. Most festivals provide that very good context, but some of them don't, you know? Some of them push you out into places which are really, you know, um, where the audience is, has a very different expectation. Secondly, I think dramaturgy, dramaturgy is important um, um, because of what I've just said. Because it basically brings a, a often in street arts, there's a massive context and meanings associated uh, both in terms of the way that art forms are put together to make shows, but also in the construction of space that they're working in. And I, use them, I keep on coming back towards the construction of the space. All space is constructed. Even nature is massively constructed. What we call nature. Yeah. Um, um, thirdly, I think um, um, it's kind of interesting. That, uh, dramaturgy is quite a good link between performance, uh, b between sorry, academia and you know academic practice and training, because in a way, um, in the, in terms of the academic world, um, um, it it allows a certain criticality that education is asking you to have. You know, you look at the way you make work with a critical reflection, which draws in questions about the concepts you use, the assumptions you make, etc. Which is a curse for training. <laughs> Let's get on with it and just do it, says the trainer. I know my method. Let's just do my method. I'll show you how it works. That doesn't mean that they're not critical. It means that critically reflective in an academic sense means that if I said to you, the audience, then I would say, what do you mean by the audience? You mean the audience is as uh, voyeurs? as accomplices, as spectators, what kind of audience are you talking about? Why do you just assume that that's a common term that we all understand? This is, this is kind of important for making good work, to understand possibly that. So, on the one hand, it's very interesting having um, uh, a, a, a study that, that really examines critically what you're up to. Dramaturgy really looks at the, the political issues behind what you're doing, the, the, the themes that are involved. Um, but it need not do. It can just be also facing towards training. How do you compose a piece of work? End of story. That's a really important piece to know. How do you make it work? How do you compose it? What goes where? Why? And how does it work? So I think, therefore, dramaturgy is important because it looks both ways and can probably be a meeting ground. Um, Especially because, as somebody mentioned yesterday, you can do a dramaturgy. Of, you said you can do a dramaturgy of, of anything. I think you said. <laughs> if I didn't, it's true anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's very interesting because the term is often used in terms of architecture, dramaturgy of architecture. Yeah, of How space is constructed by an architect influences the way we behave on a daily basis, which is the information that would come when we went go and sit in the cafe and we watch people walking. We say that's everyday life. Oh, so what is this everyday life you're talking about? Is the everyday life of a migrant the same as the everyday life of Elton John? Is the everyday life you're talking about, you know, a series of daily practices? Or is it always a battleground of consumerism? So these are questions that, that, you know, that, that, that one approach might ask. Yeah, but then so so that what you so but on a training basis when you do your looking, what are you looking at? What are you looking for in terms of the daily practice of everyday life when you're watching people go by? What what interests you? Well, the artist knows the answer. It's intuitive. That gets me. That's interesting. That's fabulous. <coughs> great. And, we, and today we'll start with intuition. Intuition is the greatest skill that an artist has. That ability to kind of go, I've got something here with a lovely idea. 
that love. When all your experience comes together into a moment and you get it, yeah? Know-how. An artist has know-how. They know how, they don't have to ask why they know it, they just know it. But in fact, that know-how does come from a huge amount of experience, of exploration, exploring, trying. That know-how gets better and better. You, know, you can be experts. Like a, like a craftsman, you can kind of pick up the right tools and just use them as you're training. But their intuition is still a fantastic place to come from. Um, so, um, so that's my third reason I think I mentioned, which is the, the question of dramaturgy looks towards the academic and also looks towards the training, so a great meeting place, yeah, potentially. But it's also threatening to some people. They kind of go, why do we want to be so intellectual about something? And then, and, and, you know, and, 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 and the, the, the academics say, oh, do we have to make decisions about something and do something? <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> battleground sometimes. Um, okay, thirdly, I th uh, fourthly, I think that dramaturgy is important because I think it challenges the conception of what street art is or could be. Um, and, um, uh, and that doesn't mean, and, and Gora and I have this discussion quite often, um, that street arts needs to go into other areas. It doesn't need to go into other areas, or does it? Now, um, in a sense, there, is, there are conceptions of what street arts is, or what street theatre is, or what these def de different definitions are. Um, um, I think it's a debate that needs to be had. Because, for example, when I worked down in Fayard, which is a place in, in, in southern France, they bring community gardening. And street arts together. Okay, it's very interesting, but really, is it about street arts as we understand it? Is that really what you're going to be doing? Community garden projects in the community and street arts in a very kind of obscure and intellectual way? You know, I mean, the, the, where do you want it to go is not, don't let it go there, let's have a discussion about where it goes. The internet has changed everything anyway. So we're, they're on the move, the audience is on the move. If we stay stuck somewhere, we've also got to look into that discussion. The audience is on the move, the audience are becoming bad creative people. They, they can make their own stuff now, they can put it online. You know? They can do terrible things and call it art. You know? They've read, the internet's redistributed the whole power relationship. Yeah? we become all uh, <coughs> mixing you know, stealing intellectual property, um, creating groups that do things, happenings, or shall we call them um, flash mobs, or whatever it is, that the power relations are all changing because of the internet. How, how power is made, how distribution is made, how creation is made, etc. Things are happening quite dramatically, yeah? Now, the power still may lay with the big organizations like the Googles, what have you, but what happens to us is often we become more like facilitators of all sorts of different groups. It's beautiful to put an amateur choir onto the street, for example, and, and put something else you, you've got in place, you, you mix all these things together and find out what that's about. Now, um, I don't think necessarily that, uh, I think that questions, I think that questions what is our art form in the same sort of way that the camera photographs questioned uh, painting. Just like television questioned theatre. What is the internet questioning? We've got to look at it. It's a dramaturgical question because it actually implies, it implodes on what we're actually going to be doing in the future. Whether we want to go there, but to analyse it is important. To know what we still do is really important, that debate. Okay. Um, so for those reasons, I think that dramaturgy is an important subject um, within the study of street arts. Um, okay. I'm not going to get into a big debate now because I want to go into practice, but any questions from that opening that you want to just highlight? Or, no, can I ask you to, could I ask you to ask questions of clarification, not questions of debate? So, things that I've said that you don't... 
Uh, the things that, you, that I've said that you don't understand or need clarification. Go ahead. Well, in the first part of your talk, you used a lot the word political. Yeah. Which I could not really relate to what do you mean by political. Um, the distribution of power. Uh, or or the, distribu the distribution of influence of one group over another. In general. And in so and, 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 and you having the power over us is also a political issue. Everything has a political issue in it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But whether I whether the, but there's also how you how you decide that political decision. Yeah. Do I have power over you? Well, I'm sure there's a big discussion about whether that's true or not here. For example. No, no, no. Okay, I'm just trying to, to figure yeah. it out because sure. you, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. see, it it feels very broadly used like political. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a very generic introduction. That's why it was there, not really. Okay. Any questions of clarification? Any things that I've said? Which are... So basically, what you're saying is that dramaturgy is every aspect of thought that it stands behind in production. In every aspect, not just the way that the story works or the context, like in theater traditional terms, yeah. but really every aspect, how the space is used, every thought process beyond the actual performance of it. As it relates to composition, and when you think what goes into composition, yeah. then you're probably inferring the same thing. Yeah. But are you somewhere in between this artistical and academic? And you think it's the same? No, I think it has two sides to it. One is very practical, how do you compose something? The other one asks, uh, which is influenced by the other side, which says many, many kind of wider thoughts goes into that composition, which can be reflective, critically reflective of debate, of discussion, as you would do in an educational kind of setup. So it's, it's double faced. It can be used very practically. What do dramaturgs do? They help compose the piece of work. What's dramaturgy do? Well, it asks lots of questions about the nature of creation, making work on all these different, different fronts. And especially in street arts, which is a hybrid group, grouping of art forms that has all sorts of different kinds of conventions and ideas and associations and politics with it. They're all different. So how do you bring all that together? You know, do we need to think about it or we just mash it together and throw it out there and say, there you go, sorted. So, something from that. Uh, another one. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I have a lot to... Yeah. <laughs> I mean... I, I shall move on. Um, no, 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 I've just... Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, then, then something is because uh, basically, in the history of street arts, and I, I also think in the presence, uh, it usually is kind of group work. But now it feels like you were introducing that this divide work is something emerging or something. No, 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 it's not new in that sense. There's always been group work, yeah. What we're just doing is perhaps asking questions about than specifically in relation to street arts, the different art forms coming together. So when you say group work, there's a group of dancers here who will agree with each other immediately. When you're a visual artist and you're a digital artist and you're a something else artist and we're trying to create this piece of work which has all these different things in it, in a space which is kind of full of issues and themes, you know, the space itself carries a lot of stuff, then there's a very good place for dramaturgy to a dramaturgist to be working with the director and the, and the cast. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a separate role. It doesn't have to be there's a dramaturg. You don't need a dramaturg to make work. But maybe the thinking about that function in your work is important. Uh, yeah, what we talk about usually is the dramaturg is a function of the performance but doesn't have to be personified in one person. Uh, the same as the director also doesn't have to be personified in one person. It can be a shared function. Yeah, so... Depends how much money you got as well. <laughs> well, it depends on how you... I mean, how horizontal you want to work, how much time do you have. <laughs> so... <laughs> sure. <laughs> you have three years, everything's possible. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? First of all. 
Okay, okay. Um, so, 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 so. Um, so, in a way, I say that and let it go. It's out the window now. Um, 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 it's a provocation of a sort. I'd ask questions of a sort. Um, and now we're going to do something.